Ah, well, 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 so there we are, and um, I'm sure that everybody's looking ahead to a great weekend as four Ghanaian clubs go in and attempt to, you know, uh, you know do what many people think uh, would possibly be uh, unthinkable, and I'm talking about Kumasi Asante Kotoko, Brekum Chelsea, Ebusuan Dwarfs, and of course, um, Mediama SC, and that uh, they will be going, uh, playing the, the, the return legs of their respective encounters. So aside, uh, Mediama SC, who played the first, uh, uh, the first game away, uh, three other clubs will be playing uh, right here in Ghana. Uh, the reason why uh, some games will not be played in the uh, Premier League, the first Capital Plus Premier League this weekend. So we'll be looking ahead to that. And of course, it's big blockbusters as we look ahead to the uh, FA Cup in the English Premier League. It's Manchester City going up against Chelsea one more time. And Arsenal facing Liverpool one more time. Isn't that going to be interesting? The last time, it was Chelsea uh, getting away with that 1-0 triumph over Manchester City at the Etihad. And of course, it was Liverpool who uh, stole a 5-1 victory from Arsenal. And uh, it surely was a, a totally domineering performance from Liverpool. So this is it. You start sending in your messages. Uh, place your comments on my Facebook wall as well and tell me what your expectations are in these games. Are these going to be the repeats of the recent, or we're going to have something totally different? Well, we'll also be uh, having a chat with FA President Kwesi Nyantechi, who's uh, talking about preparations for Brazil 2014. And also, just in case you're wondering how to go about getting your tickets for the Mundial, well, uh, there are answers for you right here on the show, uh, as Ghana FA Vice President uh, Fred Krenzel talks about ticketing for Brazil 2014. There's so much more to look forward to uh, here on the show, as always. The reason why you have to stay right there. A round of commercials, and we go straight to the newspapers as usual. This is Sports Today. All right, so there we are. So uh, you just saw that promo on uh, World Series Boxing, and it's always live here on your Joy Sports channel on Multi TV, Friday night. So uh, as we celebrate a day of love, you can just uh, relax in your couch uh, over a glass of fine wine and just uh, watch those very fine fights, very big moments of action. Let's go to the newspapers now. And um, uh, Accra Hearts of Oak says, unity prevails. There we are. Uh, all the big stakeholders in Accra Hearts of Oak came together and uh, everybody is pledging total support. And uh, there you see the likes of the um, board chairman, Togbi Afada, and also uh, Neil Armstrong Motogbe, the managing director of the club. So I um, would like to believe that Accra Hearts of Oak's uh, unity in purpose will push to allow uh, things to happen well and uh, things to go well now. There we are. So these were some shots from the uh, meeting where all stakeholders came together to address issues within the club. So there we are. These are shots from the memorable meeting. So how will this impact on the club's performance as we go into match day 17 of the uh, first Capital Plus League? Well, um, we get to see. Let's now go into the graphic sports newspaper and its details. There's, uh, the star squad is set for Brazil. Uh, we brought you that story earlier in the week. And uh, this is uh, what's on the graphic sports front page. It says, star squad set for Brazil. So Kevin Prince Boating. Uh, in the um, unlikely instance that any uh, bad long injury uh, hits him, he surely will be part of Coach Kosia Pierce's side. So there we are, blockbusters, Manchester City uh, going up against Chelsea and Arsenal versus Liverpool in the uh, FA Cup. And Midyama to ride on and uh, Kotoko and others too in the uh, continental competitions. Well, so uh, Ghana's four clubs are going to the return legs of the um, first set of qualifiers for the CAF inter-club competitions. Now, let's go into tennis star Andy Roddick's mansion. And there it is. It's uh, amazing, beautiful. 
sweats hard, uh, gets the results, and of course, uh, tastes the golden roses as well. So there we are. Grab the graphic sports newspaper and uh, take a look, flip through the pages, and you're definitely going to see um, the inside of the mansion of Andy Roddick, the American tennis star. Now let's go to the center spread, and uh, Sochi has a lot to uh, tell us in uh, pictures. Russia picking up a medal in figure skating. And, of course, uh, action from that game between Manchester United and Arsenal in midweek. And uh, Ghana's beach soccer team is ranked eighth in Africa. Good news coming in there. And, of course, these are the FA Cup blockbusters. Uh, the clubs met... Uh, not too long ago, and now they're coming up against each other one more time. Brendan Rogers and Arsene Wenger going up against each other again. Uh, is it going to be another 5-1? Well. <laughs> okay, so there it is. And um, the Sochi Games in Russia saw the pair, or the Russian pair, uh, win a gold medal. And, of course, these are the kinds of things that President Vladimir Putin is looking for big honors after so much investment have been made in that Winter Olympics event. All right, so let's uh, focus on uh, the other newspapers now. I've got with me the uh, 90 Minutes as well. And uh, there we are. The 90 Minutes says, Nyanti Chi on the fire over World Cup budget. Tria, 20 million for World Cup. There we are. So 20 million U.S. dollars is what um, Ghana will spend putting together the World Cup. Um, I'm talking about Ghana's participation in the World Cup. On the back page is uh, Black Stars player, uh, Samuel Inkum. Also likes to look good as well. And um, in the center spread, there are many, many stories there. And uh, Ronaldo was hit with a cigarette lighter, and he fell to the ground. There we are. These are some of the bizarre things that happened to uh, the football stars. Kotoko can't lose this one. And uh, it's all about what's going to happen in the continental competition. And there we are, Asante Kotoko getting ready for all the uh, continental action against Barak Young Boys, Young Controllers, I beg your pardon. And obviously, this is a very, very big game, a game with very high stakes as well. And um, the Liberians have pledged to uh, upset the Kotoko lads. Well, is that possible? Well, we'll see. So there we are, this is the... Uh, one half of the center spread where uh, Kotoko beat uh, back Barak Young Controllers 2-1. And that was the part one. So let's see what happens uh, in the, the remaining uh, game, the next game to be played. So there we are. These are the newspapers for you. Let's get into the major stories for today. Now, um, the uh, round of 16 uh, draw has been held for the MTN FA Cup. Let's go over and have the images of how the draw was held and who is playing who. And today's parents have even made it far more interesting because we are looking forward to a good pair of matches within this competition. Uh, a mix of Premier and First Division clubs and Premier versus Premier, I think, is going to say a lot of the coming days. We have heard from uh, Kurt's reports that there's been a few worrying situations concerning those year's uh, uh, events. What's your take on that? Yeah, we're, we're surprised that all of a sudden we are meeting uh, issues of hooliganism, issues of attacks on officials and the rest, and I think it's quite worrying. It, it tells you by itself that the competition is becoming keener and keener 
and people are, are beginning to show more interest than before. But that does not mean that spectators should take the law into their own hands. We think all this should stop. We should play football by the rules. If anybody is dissatisfied, he can come by the rules, come to the GFA, make a protest, go on appeal, and then win, win the case on merit. But to go brutal, as some of them are doing, would not do any good to the competition. Don't forget, this competition is being funded by MTN. They want good mileage out of their investments. Violence will not give them any mileage, and definitely it's going to affect our take in the coming years. But the rules are very clear, and I'm sure the clubs would have known it even before they kicked the fair sport. Why do you think they're doing this now? Well, it's, it's difficult to tell. These matters have been put before the disciplinary committee. Definitely there they will do a surgical analysis of, of what is happening. Uh, their reports haven't come yet. So at, at this moment, ours is to speculate that people are taking the matches far more seriously than before. And there's the urge to win. Clubs are going to Africa. They are playing the Confederation Cup. So definitely they know that there is something that will come out of all this. And people want to benefit out of the take of this competition. We're in the round of 16, but there are still clubs who haven't even played their round of 64 games. I mean, for a competition that it's four years uh, after it went into abeyance, surely this is not good enough. Well, this is the democratic aspect of soccer, football generally, even up to FIFA. If we don't go by the rules, any club can then decide to go to court or to go to FIFA. So we want everybody to be given a chance. Some clubs have issues to settle at the level of the disciplinary committee, and therefore they must go and sort themselves out before they are given the opportunity to play our matches. That is the reason for all this. Just that we think that when matches are played and people are dissatisfied about one or two issues, then they have a right to go on the disciplinary process and get the right thing done. I can assure you these are not very, very serious issues. Some of them are about strips and things of that nature that I think the disciplinary committee will sort out in a very short while. When you say they are not that serious, it looks like it's taking forever for these issues to be sorted out. Would we have to get to the quarterfinal stage before someone is playing a preliminary game? Well, naturally, we decided to go a, a, a bit further because it involves only one set of parents. Uh, we, right, like in this one, we have eight sets of parents, and all these involve only one set of parents. And so, if you look at it, one would say uh, it is not quite a summer. One swallow does not make a summer. It's not as serious as one would expect. But definitely, definitely, very God, God forbid, if these things are not corrected before the next round, we may have to wait a bit, get them corrected before we, before we can proceed. So these are the fixtures. Asante Kotoko will play Istanbul FC. Brekum Chelsea play Inter Allies. Uh, Hazakas uh, play Gold Stars. Feyenoord play New Edubiasi. Ashanti Gold play Mighty Jets. And um, Metro Stars will play uh, either Rose Park, Right to Dream, Ho Dynamos, or King Faisal. Uh, those four uh, clubs are expected to play against each other. Oko United will play Midyama SC. Bichim United will also play either Ibiana Stars, Asoka Deportivo, Dunkwa United, Dawenya, uh, Royal Faith, or Bazooka FC. So uh, this is the MTN FA Cup round of 16 pairings here on Sports Today. Let's now talk some more of World Cup business because uh, FA President Kwesi Nyantichi has been talking about uh, the, uh, FA, uh, the uh, World Cup and uh, Ghana's participation as well as plans uh, going ahead into this uh, competition. Ghanaians in the Blasters is justified because they have a right to know what is going on around their national team. Uh, we are also working very hard to confirm all of the arrangements. Some are still... Uh, in, in, in their preparatory stages. Uh, in other words, some are still not confirmed. Even for those that were initially confirmed, there are uh, appeals or requests to review them coming from our technical team, coming from even the organizers. Let me confirm that on the 5th of March, we play a friendly with Montenegro. That is confirmed. On 31st of May, we play a friendly with Holland. It's also confirmed. The team will be commencing preparations for the World Cup on 25th of May. 
uh, up to the, our participation in the World Cup. And then we will play one friendly match. Uh, we we'll play the original plan to play two friendly matches in the U.S. against Honduras and Costa Rica. There is a request that we should play just one match, but it's not confirmed yet. Uh, I will advise that uh, very soon we'll do a media release or a press conference to give you the final program of the Black Stars. So far, uh, this is what we have been able to settle on. Have you been able to um, have a look at uh, the Macau venue where the team is going to be um, based during the World Cup and how the place is as we speak? Yeah, we visited Marseille uh, during the draw in December. We went to the hotel, that's is Radisson Hotel, where the team will be based. We slept there for one night, and so we had a feel of the place. We went to the training venue. We saw it. We went around the city. Uh, it, it's not a bad place. It's, it's quite okay. There were rumors or reports of uh, incidents of violence. Uh, people said it was the most violent city in Brazil. It may be so, but during the period of World Cup, you agree with me, security is stepped up to a level. Crime is almost non-existent. Prior to the 2010 World Cup in South Africa, we had reports about the level of crime in South Africa, but during the World Cup, we never heard about these uh, incidents of crime. And so I can assure you that FIFA has put adequate measures in place. The government of Brazil has put adequate measures in place to contain all threats to security. Uh, our team will be in Maceo. We'll be moving from Maceo to play our matches in Natal, the first game. Uh, we'll be moving from Maceo to play our second match in Fortaleza. We'll be put, moving from Natal to play our first third match in Brasilia and the next arrangements have all been put in place. Finally, I, I spoke to the coach of uh, the Black Stars in South Africa concerning um, you know, people we might want to employ to have a look at the teams you are going to be competing with. He's not happy about the idea that Ghanaians would want to know the identities of these people. What do you make of that? We have uh, contracted people to do the work for us. It's more like espionage. <laughs> so sometimes you don't want to mention their names and identities so they can easily be identified and spotted when they are in the enemy territory. But uh, having said that, uh, at the appropriate time, maybe we'll announce the names uh, for you all to know who they are. If the coach says he doesn't want it to be done, we'll respect his wish and, and keep it to our chest. But the most important thing is getting them to do their work. All right, so you heard the FA president, Kwesi Nyantichi. He says uh, everything is under control as we build up to Brazil 2014. Uh, do you have your tickets yet for the tournament? Well, uh, if you don't, then I'm sure that these tips from the FA vice president uh, coming up uh, Fred Krenzel uh, will be very, very uh, useful to you as you uh, get yourself together, put together your uh, travel package and your plans for Brazil 2014. The situation, I mean, FIFA had to close the website for the application of tickets, and that was it. FIFA will come back and let those who have been successful know that they have been successful so that they could go ahead and pay for their tickets by the 28th of February. On what basis is FIFA going to measure whether you know, a country has been successful or otherwise? Well, it depends on the number of people who apply for tickets. If the number of people who apply for tickets far exceed the quantity that has been allocated to each participating member association, then there will be a random draw. Do you have the exact numbers of the number of applications that have been made at the moment from Ghana? I cannot tell you, but... Uh, offhand, but I know that about 3,000 people applied for, over 3,000 people applied for tickets from Ghana. But our location for the first game was 1,975. I mean that we have over, you know, um, you know, getting ticket, uh, tickets are concerned, and what would we do in this regard then? Well, it's up to FIFA. If, if you see the number of applications, then FIFA will then have to do what they call the random draw. So that is what they will do, because a lot more people applied for tickets as against the number that was allocated to Ghana. Is this still feasible to assess tickets from the pool? It's... It's closed now, so you cannot assess any tickets at all. You only have to assess tickets when the window opens again in 
April. So uh, between now and April, do, do you have any fair idea when the exact dates are going to be given so that people who may have lost out in the first time may, uh, you know, start preparing for the second one? Yes, certainly I could give you the dates, in, you know, when you come over next time. Okay, so you heard all of that from the FA Vice President Fred Krenzel. Uh, we're building up to Brazil 2014, and it's very important that we have all the available information. Well, talk about Brazil 2014, and uh, a host of uh, travel and tour agencies are putting together packages for fans so they can go and enjoy, uh, you know, the beauty of football in Brazil uh, in a few months' time. So Bamed uh, Travel and Tours, run by Alaji Ahmed Bando, uh, are also putting together their package for the FIFA World Cup to you now. I've been uh, Natal, Fortaleza, Brasilia. I've been the Brazil territory for the past one month, uh, trying to secure hotel accommodation for the football fans who will be uh, trooping to race of Bamed to get to Brazil. You know, very two weeks after the, uh, the team has qualified, Ambert signed a contract a day with Bamed to airlift every Ghanaian football fan from here to Natal for seven, just seven hours. So I think uh, we are on course. For so far, so good. Tell us what you saw when you went to Natal. The World Cup, if you're in uh, Natal, is it like in Ghana? Brazilians, everybody talking about Ghana, uh, Germany qualifying from the group stage, and uh, also uh, Ghana, Brazil going for the grand finale. I think the, the atmosphere in Brazil, the support uh, is very encouraging, and I think every Ghanaian to you have to make his, his or her mind to get to Brazil to support the team uh, to win the World Cup. What people want to know is whether you, at this point, have what it takes to take them to Brazil. I have more than what it takes because I've done it before and I've been doing it. I started the World Cup in 2006 in Germany. Coming back to uh, uh, 2010 in West South Africa, I sent a lot of Ghanaian football fans. And coming back to Ghana, England, March in uh, uh, Wembley, I sent over 600 Ghanaians who enjoyed their stay with Bamed, and it has been fantastic. The, the, even the response has been very fantastic. And I think Bamed is on course, and it, uh, we had the pedigree and the, uh, the expertise to do the job. It's not a matter of nine-day wonder. It's something we've been doing in the years. We started it, and we can uh, continue doing it. How much do funds have to pay to your company, and what services are you offering them? We are doing charter, seven hours charter from here to Nata, that on Emirates. Then we're going to uh, accommodate them, give them breakfast, lunch, and supper. That comes with a total cost of 6,100 uh, 6, US dollars, which is a very fantastic uh, package. We're giving breakfast, lunch, and supper. We're also doing a sightseeing tour in Brazil, where the team will have a break. We'll have people going to a uh, 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 beach park to have fun and enjoy their time in Brazil. Are you also going to be providing internal transportation for the team because we are not playing on one particular venue? As I speak to you now, I had a contract with some shuttle uh, uh, companies and also the TAM airline in Brazil. As one of the biggest airlines in uh, Brazil that I've signed a deal with them to airlift the football fans from Natal, Fortaleza and Brasilia and back to their base in Natal. So it has been very encouraging and very fantastic. I've secured everything. Plans are far advanced. And I can tell every football fan in this country that uh, when they come on board with Bamed, they will have their time and enjoy their stay in Brazil. It's all about four months to the World Cup. What would you make of the response? Have people been trooping into your office to, um, you know, travel with you? You can check with the FA uh, ticketing uh, uh, net that will have over 600 applications now as I speak to you. With, with the FA, they can tell you we have over 600 people applied, buying tickets from them, from Bamed outfit. So that can tell you the response is very encouraging and we know we'll get there. Do you have the experience of, you know, this particular business? You've been doing it for years, but there are still a lot of Ghanaians who, for whatever reason, um, still struggle to understand why they need to pay so much money to go and watch the World Cup. You know, excuse me to use this word, Brazil is not, it's not in Africa, it's in South America, and it's far. It's not a matter of going to South Africa, it's a matter of flying over the Atlantic. So if you want to go through Europe, you go over 24, 25, 26 hours. But if you want to go direct seven hours, it's very expensive 
uh, getting to Brazil is far, and also the country is very expensive. You know, uh, even accommodation in Brazil, the lowest uh, room you can have in Brazil is less than, uh, it's more than $415 a day. So one can tell you, you being in Brazil for a whole month is going to cost you a lot. So it's been very expensive living in Brazil. That is why the fare has uh, uh, shot up a bit. That we were expecting to have about 5,000, 4,000 plus, but no, you can. Whoever tells you you spend 4,000 live in Brazil for one month is not true. Then you're going to be in a, a, a hotel accommodation whereby, if you are not careful, you're going to rent an area in Brazil. So come with us with, to have the package we have, and it has been very good package and fantastic. We have a, a, a three, four, five uh, star hotels in Brazil with secure rooms with secure. So if you come, we look at your money you can uh, afford, then we can fix you either in three or four, five room uh, a star hotel in Brazil. All right, so uh, you heard from Alaji Ahmed Bando, who is a uh, key within the sporting fraternity when it comes to uh, putting together travels for the, uh, you know, for sports fans and all of that. Okay, so let's also get into uh, the business of uh, FIFA rankings because Ghana has dropped 13 places uh, to 34th on the latest FIFA rankings. Now, um, so uh, Ghana has dropped 13 places, uh, you know. So there we are, uh, the uh, national team, the Black Stars. We'll probably have to do some more work as we look ahead to the next set of rankings. So this is how it's looking like on the African continent. Africa's top 10 has Cote d'Ivoire, Algeria, Cape Verde Islands, and then Ghana. So Cape Verde is rated ahead of Ghana. And of course, in the world's top 10 is Spain, Germany, Argentina, Portugal, Colombia, Switzerland, Uruguay, Italy, Brazil, and the Netherlands. Okay, so that's what it's looking like on the latest FIFA rankings. Let's also uh, focus on uh, goalkeeper Richard Olili Kingston, who is... Uh, hoping that his uh, Ghanaian teammate at Balikersi Sport, Kwame Amponsa Kakari, will be given a chance to play in the Black Stars. The 22-year-old is currently uh, the third top scorer in the Turkish second tier with 11 goals in 22 games. Uh, pretty impressive. And uh, Kakari is, is said to be one of the youngest uh, players knocking on the doors of the Black Stars with a few months to go for the World Cup in Brazil. And uh, goalkeeper Kingston, who observes the impressive performances of the ex-Interallied striker on a regular basis, wants an international opportunity for the young lad. So, goalkeeper Richard Kingston is making a strong case for uh, Kwame Karikari to be called up into the Black Stars team. Also, uh, in the vein of goalkeeping, Free State Stars goalkeeper Daniel Lejay says uh, it will be erroneous for fans to think that the um, first uh, choice in the goalpost has been decided. Well, he says that well, he is uh, working towards taking up that first place, which has for a long time, been, uh, for a while now, been occupied by goalkeeper Fatao Dauda. And before that, obviously, was uh, Adam Lassen Kwarase as well. So he says that he will uh, topple them and he will take over that number one spot. And of course, his jersey reads one. <laughs> so goalkeeper Daniel Ajay, the ex Liberty professional's uh, safe pair of hands there. Let's also focus on uh, defender John Boy, who uh, massively boosted uh, the world, who's massively boosted the World Cup uh, chances of the Black Stars uh, as he returns to action for the first time in six months in the French top flight. So this was on Wednesday night. The central defender was in action for uh, his club Rennes on Saturday night as they defeated Auxerre one 0 in the French League Cup away game. So the man John Boy is back into action. All right, so some more football stories here for you. And um, 
West Ham is uh, keen on a summer move for summer income. And these are reports um, emerging that West Ham United could just be making an attempt to sign on summer income during the summer transfer window. Remember that Samuel Lincoln tasted action at Basel FC, uh, played in the UEFA Champions League and the Europa League as well, and made his way to Ukraine and uh, now is on loan uh, at Greek side. Platonias. All right, we go uh, ahead with some more stories. And ex Black Stars defender Joe Addo, uh, he says that uh, he thinks that Majid Waris, Abdul Majid Waris, uh, can impress at the FIFA World Cup. Remember that Abdul Majid Waris has been a very, very strong uh, contender for regular places in the Black Stars team, especially considering that he's been able to deliver, uh, you know. Every time he's given the opportunity, he's uh, able to score. And uh, that surely is a very impressive record for uh, the youngster. So Joe Addo thinks that this player is one who can glow at the World Cup. And, of course, Sami Osei Kufour is also in the news. He is also talking about, um, you know, the Black Stars uh, doing a lot of world-class defending at the World Cup. So let's also focus on head coach of Accra Hearts of Oak, Mohamed Polo, who has indicated that the team needs unity uh, and peaceful working conditions to beat Adriana Stars in the first Capital Plus League. Of course, those matches, uh, those round of matches come up um, later this weekend. And Mohamed Polo says that we need the unity. And, of course, after that crisis meeting, uh, the waters uh, have calmed things down. And we hope that Accra Hearts of Oak can be able to return to winning ways. Okay, so let's take a look at the fixtures now. And these are the fixtures to expect for the weekend. Accra Hearts of Oak, uh, they will be going away to Adriana Stars. Enter Allies and Amidal's Professionals. They play one big potential cracker of a game later today at the Tema Park. And uh, this will be, uh, you know, ahead of the official unveiling at the same venue of the uh, headline sponsorship of First Capital Plus for the league, First Capital Plus Bank. And, of course, uh, King Faisal will play Hazakes. Bichem United face Ashanti Golden, another uh, big encounter. And Heart of Lions, they will play Wa All-Stars. Let's do a bit of continental action now. And uh, the acting CEO of Kumasi Asante Kotoko, uh, Opokunti, uh, remains defiant about their chances of qualifying to the next stage of the CAF Champions League at the expense of Barak Young Controllers. Remember that um, Kumasi Asante Kotoko hold a 2-1 win going into this second encounter, and it surely is going to be a very tough one for Asante Kotoko. But, well, uh, they uh, remain very, very hopeful and very defiant that things just will go their way in Liberia. All right, so let's take a look at the fixtures to expect. Flambeau de l'Est uh, will play Diable Noir, and uh, Diamba will play Asfa Yenega. Of Burkina Faso and um, Stad Malien will play Sport de Praia Cruz, AC Leopards will play uh, Ryan Sport, and Primero de Agosto of Angola will play uh, Lioli, and Black Africa will play Kaiser Chiefs of South Africa. So these are the uh, Champions League fixtures, CAF Champions League fixtures for the weekend. Also, there are more Comoruzin play Young Africans, Brikum Chelsea play. Atlabar FC in South Sudan. Fula Edifice play Al Ali Benghazi. 
of Libya. Gor Mahia play US Bitam. Angie De Noste play uh, Enyimba FC of Nigeria. Royal Armed Forces play Real Bamako of Mali. And uh, Akunangui play Astre Duala of Cameroon. And of course, Asante Kotoko go away to Barakian controllers. Horoya FC, they play uh, Nuhadibu. And of course, Diamond Stars face Raja Casablanca, who won the, uh, the CAF Champions League at the expense of Ashanti Gold. In the year 1997. Now, uh, FIFA has ordered uh, Egyptian giants Zamalek to pay 80,000 US dollars to Ghanaian side Accra Hattesburg over the transfer of defender Karim Alassan. The world governing body uh, slapped this massive fine on Tuesday following the status committee meeting over the transfer. Zamalek signed the Ghanaian player in 2011, and uh, this was after he ended his contract with the Kras, but failed to establish himself, and the team asked him in 2012. Hearts reported this to uh, FIFA after Alassan ditched the Phobians three years ago to join the Egyptian clubs, claiming he was a free agent amid uh, curses from the career, on the career of the defender from the Accra these chance. Now the transfer infuriated Hearts who claimed they were due some amount of money as they helped in the development of the player which uh, aided the action at FIFA. So 80,000 US dollars is uh, there for the taking for Accra Hearts of Oak after winning uh, this protest that they lodged at the uh, offices of FIFA. The story we will be bringing you next. Okay, that's the story we'll be bringing you next uh, on the uh, pitch situation at the Accra Stadium. Let's uh, do a round of commercials. I'll be reading some of your messages that are coming in. Remember, it's Nathaniel Atto, Citizen Atto. Uh, get on my Facebook wall. Let's get talking about uh, all the topics uh, uh, and all the stories uh, we've been bringing you so far here on Sports Today. It's on the Joy Sports channel on Multi TV. New light and really provides. Okay, so let's go to a bit of your messages as well. Nana Kwesi Ampon Sabuaji, the first says, Algeria overtaking Ghana is surprising because they have done nothing to prove themselves worthy of that position uh, for a long time now. I guess FIFA needs to put their, um, put on their medicated glasses. Ikechuku Kenneth Aja says, not happy Valentine's Day, same to you as well. And uh, tell FIFA that I don't understand their ranking, especially, um, okay, especially in Nigeria. Now, um, Hamza Alassan says, good luck to Kotoko. And uh, uh, Hamza says he's watching the show. All right. Uh, Redeemer, Eli Klim, Sevo KB says, how can Cape Verde and Algeria be ahead of Ghana? Sometimes I doubt the credibility of FIFA. FIFA ranking, Chia. Now, um, uh, Kwaku, uh, Kwaku uh, Philip Kwejo Ugundu says, I think FIFA's ranking is not good for us at all. Daniel J will do better if given the chance. Okay, so goalkeeper Daniel Eje says that he will be the number one uh, as we build up to the World Cup. And uh, Jules Afedi says, uh, uh, oh my God, uh, the FIFA ranking too? Okay. Uh, he says that the, uh, the city is depreciating and now the FIFA ranking to Ghana uh, is not doing well. Oh, say United, Moise Abre, but still uh, United forever. Okay, he decides to talk about my, my Manchester United and it's Mark O to me there on my Facebook wall. Send some more messages and let's uh, share with everyone else. Okay, so there is more um, uh, to talk about. Uh, we've been talking about the pitch of Accra, of the Accra Sports Stadium. Well, the pitch will be resting uh, over the weekend because uh, the originally scheduled uh, Premier League game over there will not happen because of the four clubs that are taking part in the African competition. Um, let's now take a listen to the CEO of Greengrass Technology, Frank uh, Boahin, who has been talking about, uh, you know, the pitch and its uh, quality and what will be done uh, within the next one month. You know, the pitch is in entirety is 100 percent, and the length is 100 meters by about 75. So when we are working on a pitch, we divide it into four quarters. So each quarter is then divided into 20 percent. 
So when you are assessing the pitch, you do it in each quarter of the pitch. So we have an imaginary line that runs from penalty spot to penalty spot. And then you have the existing center line, which everybody sees through the middle. So when you run a line from the penalty spot to the penalty spot and through the middle, you have four corners. As you can see behind me, if you look at the pitch, you see that the four corners of the pitch all has grass. From one corner to the other corner is fully grassed. From the other corner to the other corner is fully grassed. The only part of the pitch that we are having a problem is through the middle, which is the highly concentrated area for any particular match or use. So when you break it down on 20 percentage points, each corner of the pitch is at 20 percent, at 20 percent, at 20 percent. You agree with me that if I do that through the middle, it's left with another 20 percent to give me 100. But what I decided to do was that, from my own professional point of view, I wasn't satisfied. So I even minus myself the 10% from the 80 and became 70, giving me 30%, which is the middle of the pitch, which is not even totally bare, but it's not fully grassed. So I came to a conclusion that the pitch is at 70%. But professionally, if the pitch is at 85%, then the pitch is past fit for use. So if you go on the assumption that I've just done at 20%, at 20%, and at 20%, that's at 80%. So what is left through the middle is 20% to give me 100% of total grass cover of the pitch. And that's how we make the calculation. All right, so that was uh, Frank uh, Boahin. He is in charge of Green Grass Technology who take uh, care of the uh, cross stadium pitch. Let's uh, do some more uh, text messages. Uh, Yuan Dos Shirley Hazard says, um, Eden uh, hat trick will fire the blues to victory. We're going to make it a blue day. Innocent uh, Kumen Sakwajo says, I wish all the Ghanaian clubs good luck in the, good luck in the CAF uh, Champions League. Okay, thank you very much for all of those messages. Let's now uh, take a look at what's happening in Egypt as well because FIFA is calling for the reinstatement of the boards of some Egyptian clubs. Now, um, this was uh, because of what happened when ministry officials were deposed. And um, FIFA is saying that Egypt's government must never interfere in football business. So there we are, FIFA. Says that the board of Zamalek must be reinstated. Also, uh, Gordon Egerson has a breath of uh, relief because he will be staying on in charge of the Bafana Bafana when they take on Brazil in a friendly on March 5. And this looks likely to uh, see out uh, his contract. Okay, so Gordon Eagleson is still in charge of the Bafana Bafana team, just in case you're wondering what his future was going to be like. And, of course, uh, Coach Stephen Keshi has recalled uh, Joseph Yobo into the uh, Nigerian squad for Mexico. Now, the 33-year-old has played for Nigeria since they won the Africa Cup of Nations in, Ni in South Africa last year. Yobo is Nigeria's most capped player with 93 appearances and now has a chance to go to the World Cup. But there is no place in the squad for regular quintet Sunday Mba, Brownie Deya, John Ogu, Madi, Udwamadi, and of course, Chigozie Aguim. Now the four, the inform VRL striker Igechukuche and Stoke City's Peter Odemwinje have also been overlooked in the game in the United States of America. All right, so Joseph Yubo will be making a return to the Super Eagles. Now, uh, Lazio has threatened legal action against those um, who have questioned the legitimacy of the age 
of their 17 year old uh, Cameroonian player, Joseph Minala. Plays for the youth uh, team of Lazio, and uh, there have been major, major, uh, you know, uh, talk. There's been major talk about his looks and his physique, and uh, many people suggest that he's not 17 years. This uh, made the player withdraw his uh, Facebook account. He closed it down and also relocated uh, on Instagram and made it a private uh, page. And so uh, the club has come to his defense. They say that, look, he is sharp. He runs like the 17-year-old, so let's give him a break. He is definitely 17. The only problem is that his looks are a bit funny and uh, his looks uh, just give him away uh, a bit but it, the, the, the thing is that uh, Minala is uh, 17 that's according to his club and they say this uh, look on his face or the way his face uh, looks now is just a possibility of uh, hard times during childhood okay now ex Moroccan star Abdel Salam uh, Wadu uh, has won a court case against uh, a Qatari club side. And uh, they failed to pay the player for six months. And uh, he has won. And the Qatari, uh, Qatar SC uh, also withheld his visa, his exit visa. And um, this uh, pushed him to go to the dispute resolution chamber of FIFA and this has been adequately dealt with. So these are the fixtures to expect Sunderland play Southampton, Cardiff City play Wigan Athletic, Charlton Athletic will go away to Sheffield Wednesday, Manchester City play Chelsea, uh, Everton play Swansea, uh, Sheffield United play Nottingham Forest, Liverpool go away to Arsenal and of course Brighton play Albion, uh, sorry Brighton, Albion play Hull City. All right, so there we are. Elche will play Osasuna in, the, uh, in Spain. And, of course, uh, Atletico Madrid play Real Valladolid. And uh, Almeria play, Almeria play uh, Levante. Barcelona host uh, Rayo Vallecano. Villarreal play Salta Vigo. And Granada play um, Real Betis. Real Madrid are away to Hetafe. While Athletic Bilbao host uh, Espanyol. And Valencia go away to Sevilla. Malaga will play... Uh, Real Sociedad. All right, AC Milan uh, in Italy. AC Milan play Bologna, and of course, the uh, campaign under coach uh, Clarence Seedorf is ongoing. Fiorentina play Inter, Lazio go away to Catania, same as Parma, who go away to Atalanta. Cagliari play Livorno, Udinese play Genoa, and um, um, this, these are two teams that Ghana International Mohamed Polo played for. And uh, Sassuolo play Napoli, and uh, Sampdoria, they play AS Roma, while Hellas Verona play Torino. In Germany, Mainz will play Hanover 96, Freiburg play Bayern Munich, Borussia Dortmund face Eintracht Frankfurt, and uh, CSG Hoffenheim uh, playing Stuttgart, uh, Braunschweig, they will welcome uh, Hamburg. While Borussia Mönchengladbach play Werder Bremen. Bayer Leverkusen play Schalke 04. Kevin Prince Watson, Schalke 04. And of course, um, Augsburg play Nuremberg, while Wolfsburg play Hertha Berlin away. Let's take a quick look at the French Ligue. Paris Saint Germain play Valenciennes. Monaco play Bastia. And Lorient play Toulouse. And uh, not play Nice. And of course, Sochaux, they play Guingamp. And um, Stade de Rennes play Bordeaux, Stade de Rennes play Montpellier, Ajaccio play Lyon, Evian play Lille, and Marseille go away to Saint Etienne. I'll do some local boxing now, and uh, Ambition Promotions together with the reseller promotions are putting together uh, a night of bouts at the Art Center in Accra. Yes, you heard me right, it's the Art Center in Accra, and uh, two Ghanaian boxers, uh, home based boxers, are going to fight for the uh, big title. Um, let's take a look at uh, what um, will be happening. Uh, we, we spoke to uh, the uh, promoter, uh, Laji Tofik. 
problem with arena. Mm. Every day we are crying arena, arena, arena. Anyway, the government is trying to do something, but uh, it will be a surprise. I was just walking around, just went to Art Center. Say, oh, so we have a place like this. I went to the management and asked them, and they told me that everything here, is, what, whatever I want is available. The chair and everything. You just pay your money, that's all. Then you promote your fight. So to me, I see it as a discovery because other promoters will come and flow my full step. And uh, two, about the uh, Karakata, that one. Anybody who wanted to hear the meaning of Karakata, unless you come to the venue. Oh, okay, I see, I see. So <clears throat> you've discovered the art center as a place where you can promote. Promote, yeah, So yeah. that is going to be a main place. A where, main place now. Where boxing, boxing is now going yeah, to be grown. Exactly. Okay, exactly. Now let's go through the bill and uh, tell me, tell me about the main part of the evening, um, which is the, the fight between Aiyate and Isaac Selon. Um, how much entertainment can these two boxes give? You the see, power? these two boxes, I would say, as the Salons have traveled outside, fight for WB, one of these continental, this, I think twice or this, and they lost some point. And uh, uh, IIT, too, has climbed the top to middleweight and snapped the title there. But now, calm down, you understand me, yeah. to take back where, it belong, where the title belongs. So, to me, no. This is a fight. It's a grudge fight, and I know that it's going to be a grudge fight. That's why I said, no, these two boxers, no. They can put on a good show for people to enjoy. That's why I, make, uh, I take that particular one to be a main bout. Okay, and uh, this bout is happening on uh, Saturday, February 22nd. 22nd. It's one week away. It's one week, yes, almost. almost it's around the corner. They have yeah. said it's around the corner. Oh, I yeah. see, I see. Now, uh, tell me... Um, what other exciting bouts are we expecting on the bill? Look, all. I don't take one out. All the bill. I think you, you, you bet me at this thing. You know, you know I'm busy and no Francis Declan. Mm -hmm. You know, all these Bukum Banko, all of them pass through us. Yeah. Most of the world champions pass through us. So if we are doing something, we know what we are doing. Mm -hmm. You understand me? And uh, the way they are promoting Fight Night, Fight, I don't like. That's why I said no. We have to come back. To Tell me, tell me what you are not happy about when it comes to promoting. Uh, uh, you see, in boxing, no, we have a place that we promote. You understand me? But now, no. I was told them there's a fight around the corner. Maybe tomorrow. I be in a, B, B, a GBA executive member. I don't know that there's a fight tomorrow. Just imagine. You know, where? It's a second south. Even they are, conducted, they are conducting the weigh-in today. The weigh-in is today. You see, it's very sad. So at least we have to come back where we belong. Let's do everything. Let's do things correct so that everybody will be happy. Okay. So All right. So we will be looking forward to that bout. Uh, look forward to some more updates here on Joy Sports on Multi TV. Okay. So let's go to Seven Great Princess Academy in Danswan in Accra, who held a sports festival uh, some days ago. And they uh, doing all of this to ensure that they also are able to discover uh, some sporting talents as well. Come in a take more nonsense. Me love pretty girl like Ebon Nelson. Yeah. Drop it like Sammy Forsen. Like a Superman Nelson. Yeah, me like boxing. Yeah. We don't win this time. We never passing. Yeah. When we are real, nobody cross me. Yeah. Big up all of me bosses. That's why everybody like my thing. Like my thing. Like my thing. See, see, everybody like my thing. Like my thing. Like my thing. Everybody like my thing. Like my thing. Like my thing. See, see, everybody like my thing. Like my thing. Like my thing. From Ghana, na, 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 na. Hey. You can get me, fa la la la. Live it too tight and bada bada. Yeah. Just kill them every day, pa ga ga ga. <laughs> Dance all kingdom, all I wanna wanna. <laughs> As them youths raise your banana banana. Yeah. We speak we mind in every kana kana. New town, new mass, they buy our. Hey. Well, they gonna call bada. Sometimes it good, sometimes they bada. Yeah. Yeah, it's a chow kaka. Ha. 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 That's why everybody like my thing, like my thing, like my thing. See, say 
Yes, we have so many sports activities like Interco. So I want to train from here. So when I get there, I'll be very familiar with it. Yeah, I see it to be very competitive because uh, last year we had somebody who could run better. Uh, but this year, it's no more. But we are forcing. Since we cannot take the first, we are forcing for the second position. I expect the best one to win. And I hope my school win and Latibia should win. Maybe uh, if I don't... Do well, maybe in the hundred. I think I can do better maybe next year. All right, so there we are. Where is the next Alex Alison Felix uh, coming from? Where's the next uh, Sloan Stevens coming from? Well, probably from there. Uh, Innocent uh, Kumensa Kwaju says, I wish the Ghanaian clubs all the best in the CAF Champions League. Okay, uh, those were some of the messages. Of course, uh, thank you very much for staying with us. Later on today, there's World Series Boxing uh, late uh, at night. Uh, it's Friday Night Boxing here on Joy Sports. And of course, George Ado Jr. will bring you the best from the world of football and the football show. And also on Sunday, look forward to GFA TV and talk about the repeat. And also tomorrow, uh, Tony Webley will bring you the uh, sports review show. Now, Asamoah Jan was having fun in the Black Stars camp, and that is what will make up our moment of the day. You stay well. Have a great weekend. Thanks to the whole production team. My name is Nathaniel Atto, and I have love for sport. Yesterday, you were very, very, very good. What do you speak? <laughs> Speak, uh, make a listen, speak about game. Play very, very good. Dribble, dribble like Messi after score. Well, uh, this boy, very good. Make a listen, how you speak? <laughs> watch everybody love watch, watch. Watch when you come to Ghana, eat watch every day because watch Ghana food. Cook very good for. My friend, go buy you watch it for me. All habit here, very good. Sometimes eat habit here, but three years no eat habit here. Is it because you're very rich now you don't eat habit here? No, 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 no. Rich people eat habit here. But me, me forget habit here. Next time, me eat. I'm talking about referee. 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 The match you are eating, it is good. The match you are eating, it is good. No referee, get party. I'm talking about referee. I'm talking about referee.